BIM for Masonry, commonly referred to as BIM-M, is a masonry industry initiative geared towards promoting masonry use in a BIM environment. We are pleased to present the following video, which is one in a series to aid users in modeling masonry within Autodesk Revit. These videos are intended for users who are already familiar with the Revit interface and modeling in Revit. Please visit BIMformasonry.org for all that BIM-M offers. The first approach is the use of the existing wall cut pattern. This is what most firms tend to use as the base level of detailing for wall sections. This approach is driven by the settings of the masonry material itself that is assigned to the wall type. By selecting the wall, edit the structure, select the material, the material dialog appears, and then you can change the cut pattern of a wall. You'll see the look of all walls changed as this file currently uses a generic masonry pattern for all of our thicknesses of masonry walls. Ideally, you'd want a different material for each possible thickness of masonry unit. The advantage to this approach is that it's simple, it reads well at course levels and overall building sections or wall sections. The disadvantage is that it's not very graphically informative in regards to the use of masonry units and its coursing. The second approach uses detail components overlaid on top of the wall sections. In this case, the best approach is to have a repeating detail component or a line-based detail component with instance-based arrays set to it. We tend to keep a large selection of pre-made detail components handy for this kind of usage. Select your detail component, create similar, go to the wall section, and draw your components over the wall section. The advantage to this approach is its simplicity. It also allows you to use it when you really need it and not apply them in larger overall building sections. The disadvantage is that it's not automatic. The user is left with the decision as to when to apply this level of detail and then apply it manually. Our third approach to graphical sections is the use of splitting the composition of the wall assembly itself. Select the wall, edit type, edit structure, expand the preview, select split region, and place the splits as desired every 8 inches from the bottom. Click OK twice. The advantage to this approach is a simplistic graphical line that segments through the wall every 8 inches. This is a good model based representation, but it has limitations in regards to height of the wall. When the wall is shorter, the lines thankfully disappear, but if you get to a taller construction of the wall assembly, you find the disadvantages rather, rather quickly. Another disadvantage is the lack of detail level to this approach. On enlarged sections, a user would still be inclined to wanting to detail components to display further information of the masonry units. And lastly, our fourth approach. With the use of profiles, we can trick the wall assembly into showing what looks like built-in detail components. First, we will make a profile. We will also open the detail component of a section of masonry. We'll load the masonry detail component to the profile family, not to the project. We'll make a single profile that is essential for the core opening. Save the profile, load it to the project. Once you're in the project, select the wall, edit the type, edit structure, click sweeps, select the newly created and loaded profile. 
set it to zero foot zero inches and duplicate this a good dozen times. Go back and change the distances from to eight inches, sixteen inches, twenty-four inches, thirty-two inches, and so on. Click OK. And zoom in, you will see what looks like just the detail components we've been using in the second approach. The advantage to this approach is a quickly detailed wall with a high level of information. There's little thought put into it by the end user at this point. The advantage to this approach is that the walls will always be at this high of a level of detail, meaning an overall building section might encounter wall sections that look busy, cluttered, or muddied, withdrawing information that just isn't needed at that level. The second big disadvantage to this approach is that the walls now have sweeps built into them. When hovering over a wall with these sweeps, a user will see a confusing amount of line work that is technically hidden inside of the wall. Additionally, if they pull those sweeps back for some reason, the detail component will no longer show in the sections affected by the sweep. In conclusion, the approach that best suits your firm's needs may be different based on the amount of information you're looking to convey. Personally, we enjoy having a generic looking section that can be overlaid with detail components on a per needed basis. This is a light weight approach that gives us the most flexibility based on the scales of drawings. On behalf of the BIMFormasonry.org team, we hope that you've enjoyed our video on wall section detailing and that this helps you learn how to leverage Revit for your personal needs.